Hey guys, this week we are working on a pie, chips and beans cake with a side of garlic bread. I'm starting out with a 7 inch chocolate cake that I've cut in half and added sugar syrup to. All the items I use are in the description box below. Place one layer onto a workboard without sticking it down and add your filling of choice. This was a chocolate orange cake. Then stick a cake card silver side down to the top using ganache. This was only a 6 inch cake card so we can get the shape of the pie dish. Then start trimming from the cake card down to meet the edge of your 7 inch cake so it tapers out. Then add ganache to seal in all the sponge sides and hold your scraper at an angle just to smooth it out a little bit. Let that set and then add a second coat. Once it's dry, gently release the ganache and the cake from the workboard using a knife and stick it the right way up onto a large 16 inch drum, placing it off to one side. Dampen the ganache and cover your dish in a pale brown colour sugar paste, just rolling it into a long strip. Push the paste flat on the bottom using a smoother and trim away the excess. Start trimming the paste from the top but leave a little lip rather than cutting it flush. You can then push the paste onto the top of the cake and cut it neatly around to make the dish look thicker. Then carefully add some more filling to the top before placing on your remaining two layers of chocolate cake. This is still 7 inch round. Now carve away the 7 inch cake randomly for the puff pastry lid. This is a replica of the birthday boy's favourite pie from a local pub. This ganache layer doesn't have to be neat as we are going to then cover it in white sugar paste, slowly trimming away the base where it meets the pot. With your little finger, indent lines around the side of the puff pastry and use a Dresden tool to mark out the very top of the lid where it will be at its darkest. The pie I was replicating had a few lines running across the top. For the pastry texture, it's good old tin foil again. Just crinkle it up, flatten it back out and then use it to press all over the top and the insides of your pastry. Add in a few wrinkles here and there to the top of your pie where the pastry may have split or wrinkled. For the flaky pastry texture we're going to use wafer paper. Just rip a strip and tear off small pieces which you can then stick to the sides with a little bit of water. There aren't actually much flaky parts of the pastry until you cut the pie. It's actually still intact once it's baked so don't overdo it with the wafer pieces. Then with your airbrush, give it a light coating of yellow and brown. Spritz the top with your water bottle and wipe it with a kitchen towel to remove the colour. It will only remove the colour from the surface of the cake and the wet colour will sit in all your texture marks to add depth. Be sure to spray the tissue rather than the sides so you don't soak your wafer paper. Now you can go back in with some more brown and yellow to colour the pie. It will be paler on the sides and a nice golden brown for the top. Roll a thick strip of your light brown and stick it along the top of your pie dish. Rather than cutting it all perfectly straight and trying to add it straight to the cake, I just add any old thickness of strip which I will then cut level once it's already on with a scalpel. Smooth the top cut edge with your finger to make it nice and rounded and meet the puff pastry on your pie. 
An extra optional step is to very gently airbrush under this lip to add shadow. The dish and the puff pastry has a slight shine to it, so I'm just giving it a coat of clear edible glaze spray. Then you want to cover the board using the toilet seat method. This one has been left a lot thicker due to the large area of the front of the board that needs covering. There are always links in the description box below for my vanilla cake recipe, my ganache recipe, how to cover the board and how to cover cakes etc. Now if you have any leftover cake, this is where you can use it, but I'm using a chocolate Swiss roll. One, because it's the perfect shape already, and two, the customer doesn't have to pay me to bake a whole other cake just to create this small extra element. The birthday boy always gets a side of garlic bread, so flipping it over you can see it's already the perfect shape. I'm just cutting it down the centre to make it more realistic and carving one of the ends into a rounded baguette shape. That's it, all you need to do now is give it a coat of ganache to seal the sponge in and add stability. Whilst that's setting, we are going to rip very, very small pieces of wafer paper into a bowl and then add some green dust to create our little garlic bread herbs. Now we can cover our garlic bread in white paste. Just push any excess to the underneath and snip off bulky parts of the paste. You won't see the underneath anyway. Use your fingers to define the corners of the crusty bread. To add the fluffy bread-like texture, you can push in with a small nail brush. I bought these specifically for decorating cakes with. Don't worry too much about the top as it's going to be covered in cheese, but make sure you do the open piece of bread on the side. Then add in various holes all around using two different sizes of ball tool. Using brown airbrush colour, darken all around the sides, leaving the top and the open side white. Add yellow gel colour to a bowl with some water to make a pale yellow wash. Brush this all over the bread and let it pool into the holes to look like melted butter. Now sprinkle on your wafer paper herbs, putting them mostly around the edges as the middle will be filled with cheese. Colour some sugar paste in a very pale yellow and run it slowly down the side of the coarse holes on your grater. It will look just like grated cheese. Pile this on top of your garlic bread and then take a blowtorch. I don't use mine all that often but I managed to pick up this cheap one from Amazon which always just seems to come in handy when you need it. Gently torch the cheese and you'll see it start to melt. The longer you hold it in one place, the more it will start to brown and bubble. This is fine as that's what real cheese would do anyway. Just keep going until you have your desired effect. You can see the colour of the paste we started with and how it deepens once it's torched. So make sure you start off paler than you want it. Add this to the board at the side of your pie. For chips, roll out some yellowy brown paste, leaving it really chunky and cut out long strips. Then shorten the strips into chunky chips, cutting some edges flat and some at an angle to create varying sizes. Lay them all onto some greaseproof paper and gently airbrush the very edges and down some of the sides with brown airbrush. Don't overdo it because you can add different depths of brown to each chip to make them all unique. All you have to do then is pile them up around your garlic bread and pie. You can of course make sugar cookies as chips if you have the time. For the beans, I'm hand rolling these in sugar paste. I do actually have a huge box of orange jelly beans, however as the pie is oversized and the chips are oversized, they would have been too small and I'm a sucker for the details so we have to get the proportions right. Jelly beans are just a little tip to make this quicker if you want to. Once 
Once you have your beans, we will need the sauce. I'm using piping gel, which I'm adding some orange airbrush colour to. When you mix it together, you'll see it's still quite see-through, a bit like golden syrup. To make it a little more opaque, I'm adding a squeeze of white gel colour. Adding this drastically changes the sauce as you can see. This is great if you want to make slime or gunge too. Tip the sauce all over your beans and use a brush to help manipulate the sauce into the gaps and onto the board. Adding in a name or an age to this sort of realistic cake can give the game away too easily, so we are making a table number holder. I've got a kebab stick and a piece of wire that I've bent into a square U shape. Using a small screwdriver, bang a hole down through the drum which will hold your kebab stick steady. Add circles of white paste to create the stand and a little point shape on top of these. Thread the kebab stick down through the shapes and into the hole in the board, tapping it down securely. Then trim parts of the stand to get it how you want it. With a tiny drop of hot glue, stick your wire to the top of your stick. Yes, that's how quickly it started to set. Whilst that dries, paint on a piece of wafer paper with black paint and a fine paintbrush. Simply trim it to size with scissors. Using some piping gel, stick a strip of paste to cover up your wire, just gently wrapping the paste around it to cover it up. Slightly dampen the back of the paste and the paper should stick to it no problem. All that's left to do now is paint your stand with silver. I used Faze Silver Dust mixed with lemon extract. And that's it, a puff pastry pie in a dish, a side of chocolate garlic bread, chips and beans. Hope you find this useful. Please leave me a comment below as I always try to read them. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see what comes up next Tuesday. Thanks guys, see you next week.